Hello traders and welcome to another video on how to take advantage of large traders. So in the first video that we did last week, what we talked about was when you see a very large long position or short position added to the market, how do we deal with that? What do we do to take advantage of it? What we're going to be talking about today is going to be much more applicable because it's an instant thing that uh, you can either do or not do. So we'll be talking about that. Attacking the imbalance. So before I talk about uh, what I'm going to talk about, let's talk about what a demand run and what a supply run is. So imagine that you have a token <clears throat> that has bids and offers just about equal with a price at 400. So you can picture this. And then after that, we see a very large bid order or limit buy order is placed and it cuts through many of the sell orders uh, about $2 higher. It's about 402. So imagine that it's now higher. Then the bid gets canceled at 402, and then placed higher again, placed higher again, placed higher again. So a buy order is just being placed higher and higher, cutting through all of the sell orders, okay? This keeps happening until it gets to 408. At 408, at 408, people begin to sell aggressively, and then after that, it falls back down to 402. So it's a little bit higher than it was before. This is a very typical thing that's, that you're going to see in the market. And here is a really good example of it. Uh, previously in this picture, there was a sustained uptrend for the past, I think, like 10, 20 minutes. And then at, at the far left part of the picture, you can see that large green dot. That is a buy. After the large buy occurred, you can see there's a large bid order placed at around 16.2140. If you look at the chart right now, it says 16.2150. Uh, you can see that large orange line that was a large buy order. What happened is a buyer kept placing his bid higher and higher and higher until a large seller hit it. And then the price uh, went far lower very quickly. It went from about 3.5 down to 3.49. Why did this happen? When one guy really, or girl, or bot, really, really, really wants to buy, what ends up happening sometimes is either they do a large market order that buys up everything and then price wicks and goes down, or they place a limit order that just buys as much liquidity as it can, just placing the limit order higher and higher and higher until all liquidity is drained. When that happens, the best time to sell is when the last of that liquidity is remaining. So if you see a guy who begins buying, with, let's say, $10 million, and that bid gets placed higher, and now it's $7 million, gets placed higher, now it's $4 million, gets placed higher, now it's $500,000 left, that would probably be a good time to begin selling because all of that uh, price movement has been because of one person. And once that demand is drained from the market, i.e. sold off, then the price is probably going to return back to supply demand equilibrium, i.e. price is going to drop to a lower price probably. That's what you can see here. Here's another example um, that I think is going to be a little bit easier because it happens more often for sure. A supply run. So imagine the same situation. We have bids and offers equal at uh, around $400. Price isn't really doing much on this imaginary token. A large moving offer. So let's say that the average limit order is about $2,000 a $200,000 uh, limit seller pops up out of nowhere and is placed at 398, hits many bids, begins selling off. Okay, then it's placed lower and lower and lower and lower until it gets to 392. And then at 392, people buy the offer like this, gets placed lower and lower, and then they buy the offer, and then the offer breaks, it bursts, and then price goes right back up to 398. This is typically what happens when someone really wants to sell or you know, exit their long position or enter short. Here's a really good, just simple example of what this looks like um, on the sell side. So what we can see here from what I picked up is, on the internet is we have equal buy, equal sell orders. For some reason, they made pink buy and sell blue, which isn't really what you're supposed to do, but whatever. Uh, then you can see that there was a large limit sell order that got placed from point A to point B. This is what happens um, when the supply, demand, the supply demand equilibrium breaks and one side wins. Here the sellers are winning because as you can see, the limit order went from A to B, it got placed a little lower, and then imagine it keeps getting placed lower and lower and lower like this until it gets bought up. That is what tends to happen. Here's a really good example of it, probably the best one you're, you're gonna see so far. So on the far left, we can see that there are a bunch of static bids, meaning buy orders that don't really move much they were sold off. After that, you can see at about 16, 18, 45, that there was a bunch of selling. 
uh, a bunch of market order, a bunch of market sells hit, and also it's kind of hard to see, but a large offer was placed right at the top of 394 on the y-axis. You can see, and it went, it clamped down in price all the way down to three uh, three eight. So it went down a few percent. Um, this is actually very chaotic action over like a few seconds. This is a lot of volatility. So there's a lot of money you can make or lose with this much volatility on this market. And if you know how to play it right, then I mean, you could probably buy the low and sell the high if you know what you're doing. So basically what happened is a large seller clamped down and this seller was then eventually placed at 38. You can see right on the uh, side right there that it says 38. Then at 16.18.45, 16.18.50 on the timestamp uh, below that you can see, you can see the buys begin to hit it. This is the point where price begins to rise. It went from 38 to 387. Uh, so you probably could have made a de decent profit, uh, like a few percent immediately. Why did this happen? Well, someone really wanted to sell, or a few people really wanted to sell, and then after they were done selling, they placed that limit sell order lower and lower and lower until the buyers regained that level, attacked the seller. The seller had no more liquidity, i.e., you know, uh, orders to, to sell or orders to buy, but here orders to sell, and then the price went up. So what you need to watch out for is how do we know when it's one person who just is really trying to buy or really trying to sell versus multiple people, i.e. the entire market trying to buy or trying to sell? Very different. Well, this price movement that you're watching that we're seeing tends to result when one buyer or one seller gets very aggressive. But this isn't probably going to work if a few factors are in play. One is the annoying one that... You love it or hate it, it always happens. BTC correlation. If you see, let's say, uh, you know, an altcoin rising a little bit, and you're like, okay, this looks bullish because of whatever, and then Bitcoin just tanks 1% in 20 seconds, that altcoin is very likely going to tank. Uh, it's just how the market is. So that will kind of null this system. Additionally, there are multiple actors in the market pushing price, not just one. When you see one person just really trying to exit a long position, if you know how to identify that, and he just keeps selling, limit sell, limit sell, limit sell, market order is hitting, and then all of it's like bottlenecked at one price, gets bought up, price goes back up, that's typically one person who's just really trying to sell. But if there are multiple limit orders, if, there are, if it looks like there are multiple market orders, multiple limit orders, and it looks like there are multiple agents or actors who are, who are uh pushing the market one way, then of course this kind of system wouldn't really make sense because if you buy at the end of one seller, there might be 55 other sellers waiting to hit you, you know, to hit it lower. Uh, finally, this is the most important one, so if there's anything, you've got to focus on this last one. If market orders are only on the side of the large order book level, you do not want to try to attack the wall. What does that mean? Well, going back to here, what do we see? Well, you can see the price was selling off, it was selling off, but at the point of about 16, 18, 45, right before the first buy hit, we do not want to buy at all. Why is that? Well, if you're a buyer here, there's nothing that tells us that this wall is going to fall. For all we know, we could buy a little bit and then the wall could go lower. What you want to wait for is for uh, traders attacking the wall. So if it's a large sell order, waiting for traders to market buy the wall. And that's when we want to, to enter in. You don't want to be the lone buyer into a rapid sell-off from one trader. That's, you know, suicidal. Uh, another good example of that, let me go back to this one, is if you look at the buy that happened on the far left part of the screen, we would want to wait till the sells begin to hit that, that large bid wall um, at about 16.2150. Because if you don't wait and you just sell uh, or, or enter short of 3.5, What's to say that that buyer wouldn't just place that bid higher? So what you need to see for this kind of system to work is you do need to see uh, market orders that are attacking the wall, market orders that aren't just going in the direction of the wall. Okay. So here are a few more examples just to show this. This one's pretty dramatic. Um, this is a little bit more zoomed out, so it might be easier for some of you, but we can see that price was being pushed down. Uh, and then at about 16.36 is where things got very interesting. If you look at um, this heat map, I know it looks pretty chaotic, but just focus on the limit sell orders that are right above price, i.e. the orange like uh, shading that's right above the red. 
what we see is there is an offer that is pushing price lower and lower and lower and lower and lower up to 1636. Eventually, what ends up happening is the offer is pushing price lower and lower and there are market sells hitting. Then, you know, suddenly out of nowhere, that large uh, limit seller is attacked by market buys at about 29.15 and then price rises. This is a pretty common pattern where one person or, you know, a multiple agents are selling off with those large limit sellers and then eventually it falls. And that's very bullish. All right, and I'll go to the next one. And then this one is a little bit more zoomed in of a different coin, but showing pretty much, uh, you know, a, a similar pattern here. If you see here, there are multiple limit sell orders beginning at about 1447.30. Uh, price goes down, price goes down a little bit further. And then I want you to look at 1448 on the timestamp where it says about in the middle of the screen, there's a large limit sell order and there are people buying it. But then that limit sell order actually goes a little bit lower because you can see that the green uh, market buy dots are going a little bit lower too. This person basically put their limit sell at 3876, then they put it at about 3874, uh, 3873, 3872, and then it got bought up. This is probably the easiest of all the examples I've shown um, because what we see is just a simple sell off, sell off, sell off with a large limit sell order, uh, place lower, place lower, place lower, and then eventually that one guy who really wanted to sell is done selling, it gets bought up at 3874 and price jumps up to like uh, 397 immediately, which could make for a really good profit because of the volatility. So, and you will notice something interesting in this in this chart. The price did actually fall after this, and you can kind of see why. There was a large bid that was placed uh, that began. Uh, you can see there was a large bid that was that people were buying, and then out of nowhere, there was a large bid placed at about three nine five two. They just pushed the market up a lot higher, and then market sales began to hit it on the far right part of the screen. So that is one thing to um, look out for. So I intended for this to be just a super simple, you know, like five minute video, but Things are never that simple, and also things are never five minutes. It's always a lie. But what you do need to know is whether or not this is going to be like your main strategy, this is another tool in your, your tool belt when dealing with order flow and with really trying to time the market in the very short term. So if you can combine this with whale watching, i.e. locating where there are large long and short positions, and then beginning to watch the order flow of a market and just see people get overly aggressive. You know, kind of like in poker, if someone gets too aggressive, they're pretty easy to take advantage of, just, you know, crazily aggressive. You know, if you have good cards, you can probably make some money off a very aggressive player. Kind of same with the market. If there's a market that is, you know, let's say $10 million in market cap, but out of nowhere, someone just aggressively starts selling, you know, on no news, no reason, just for no reason at all, a uh, million dollars worth and just placing a limit sell lower and lower and lower and lower, I would bet a very large amount of money that the very second that last dollar of that million uh, sell order is filled, the price is going to go right back up to equilibrium. Happens all the time, and uh, the risk reward for that would be pretty good. Because for it not to happen, what basically would happen is it would be amazing for that guy, but after a $1 million uh, limit order sell off, he would need a lot of other people to be selling at very low prices, basically, uh, which you know, maybe happen, but a lot of times price just goes back up to um, a little bit uh, close to where it was before, i.e. equilibrium. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope that this little order flow training, super deep dive into very specific stuff was helpful. If you want a little bit more help, I do have an order flow course that you can check out in the description below. Happy trading, and I'll see you in the next one.